Who's someone you'd think would never scam anyone? Would it be Philip Ryle, an Amish ice cream store owner? Or would it be Paul Rinfret, a seemingly trustworthy fund manager? Let's get right to it. Number four, Wall Street Ponzi. After starting his investment fund, Plan Dome Partners LLC, Paul Rinfret boasted about how his investment strategy earned them triple digit returns. Each month since 2012, they claimed that they had consistently made more money. Paul Rinfret was a man with a luxurious palate, spending over $19 million on cigars, alcohol, cars, house renovations, you name it, and he bought it. He used the money to buy his dry cleaning, gas, and other daily expenses. Paul even spent $30,000 on a venue called The Water Club in Manhattan so his son could host a red carpet themed engagement party. Of course, we all want to give our families the best. And how else do we do that if not with money? The issue was that Paul did all this without spending a dime of his own money. On September 29th, 2020, Paul was sentenced to five years in prison for running a $19 million Ponzi scheme from 2016 to 2019. For returning viewers, you already know this, but for new viewers, a Ponzi scheme is when you pay current investors with the money used by new investors. It's similar to a pyramid scheme, except there's no recruiting under the pretenses of selling things to make money. Paul promised investors that if they put their money into Plan Dome Partners, he would invest their money to trade futures contracts tied to S&P 500. He claimed that he had created a foolproof trading algorithm and would only take 25% of net profits. In reality, he only used a small portion of their money and the rest to fund his luxury lifestyle. On top of that, the little money he actually did put to trading, he would often end up losing money. He would create fake statements that looked like his clients were making big bucks to stop them from pulling out. Overall, he scammed six investors out of their money. If that wasn't bad enough, he also opened accounts with a brokerage firm using the names of his family members, one being his son, John, who Paul had paid for his engagement party. Another was a family member who had passed away in 2014, and Paul had continued pretending to be this family member until 2016, long after they had passed. Paul's family claimed they were unaware of the fraud committed under their names. Instead, they thought of him as a brilliant investor. They lived in the lap of luxury, having the ability to spend $50,000 on a Hamptons vacation rental and over $400,000 on restaurants, jewelry, and shoes. He used his investors' money to pay for tanning services, student loans, car washes, and other personal expenses as well. Paul also transferred $845,000 to two companies controlled by his wife Denise, one of them being the Rinfret Group, an interior design company co-run by their daughter Missy. Denise and Missy had to write a statement claiming they had no idea that Paul had earned money fraudulently. Along with this, Paul sent $325,000 to his son John and $675,000 to his son-in-law. His family claimed they were under the impression that he had legitimately earned all of this money. Paul Renfret is still in jail, having served two out of the five-year sentence he received. After his prison time, he'll still have two more years of supervised release. He had to forfeit over $20 million and pay over $12 million in restitution for his targets. His home sits, overtaken by vines, foreclosed after his arrest. Having once had a loving family, his now ex-wife Denise and their children no longer speak to him. After living at the top for many years, Paul Renfret is a perfect example of the higher you sit, the harder you fall. Number three, scamming exec. Now let's take a trip down to Sydney, Australia, where we can find two women under trial for a $40 million scam connected to NAB, the Australian National Bank. An unknown whistleblower sent executives at the bank an outline claiming that Rosemary Rogers had been receiving money from the chief executive of an events company named Human Group, Helen Rosamond, for years. Rosemary, former chief of staff at NAB, turned herself into the police after suspicion of the scam. 
During the investigation, Rosemary struck a deal to decrease her sentence by providing information proving that Helen was involved. What a way to break up a friendship. But what they discovered since then is crucial. Allegedly, Helen offered gifts and money, intending to leave the bill to be paid by the bank. Helen made invoices to look like NAB expenses, and Rosemary ensured that the bank staff paid all the fraudulent invoices. Helen was known by all her friends to be quite generous. One of her more considerable expenses included a $620,000 trip where she took family and friends to America and had them travel by yachts and private jets. Helen bought Rosemary a luxury car and a boat. She also spent over $30,000 on a fuel tab, a friend's 70th birthday bash, and a $132,000 trip to the Rocky Mountains. The largest bill was $2.2 million, so Rosemary could buy a house and send $700,000 into Helen's pocket. They marked it as an expense for Project Eagle, the code name for the onboarding event of Mike Baird as a NAB executive in 2017. Prosecutors think Human Group had nothing to do with the Project Eagle event. While Rosemary pleaded guilty to accepting bribes, 47-year-old Helen Rosamond pleaded not guilty to 60 counts of bank fraud and 32 counts of attempting to obtain an advantage by deception. Rosemary has since been on trial and sentenced to eight years in prison. Helen's trial, on the other hand, was set for 2021. In August, her counsel applied to extend the date, stating that she could afford a legal team because the National Australian Bank had frozen all of her assets. This application was approved, and her trial date was set for early 2022. As of the upload of this video, the trial has yet to take place, but Helen's lawyer has stated that he plans to prove that Rosemary had taken all the benefits for herself. Number two, Amish scamming. When you think of the ice cream man, what comes to mind? A man in an ice cream truck ready to pull out whichever ice cream you want. Or maybe a smiling guy behind a counter scooping whatever flavor you ask. Does it involve scamming families who go to your church out of millions of dollars? Philip Elvin Real, the 68-year-old owner of Trickling Springs Creamery, scammed hundreds of Amish and Mennonite investors out of $60 million over 10 years. In what was known as the largest Ponzi scheme in Pennsylvania, Philip used the fact that he and his targets were part of the same religion to build trust with his investors. This is commonly known as affinity fraud, an investment scam that preys on members of similar identifying groups such as religion or ethnic groups. It's safe to say that people tend to trust those who worship at the same church. Those communities tend to build a group willing to help one another, but Philip wasn't interested in anyone but himself. He had lured investors to a fund that made out loans to Trickling Springs Creamery, Philip's dairy farm. Here, they sold milk, cheese, yogurt, and ice cream. Philip led investors under the pretenses that Trickling Springs was profitable, and in reality, the creamery was on its way downhill. Philip had used new investors' money to pay off old investors, and by December 2019, they had lost $59.7 million. Talk about milking his friends out of their money. In February of 2020, Philip pleaded guilty to conspiracy and fraud charges having to do with the Ponzi scheme. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison with three years of supervised release. Along with the jail time, the judge ordered him to pay a little less than $60 million in restitution, and he also had to forfeit $59 million along with the two real estate properties. It shows that you always have more to lose when you commit fraud. Trickling Springs Creamery filed for bankruptcy in September 2019 and shut its doors later that December. Just nine months later, the owners of South Mountain Creamery, a dairy farm in Maryland, announced that they had acquired Trickling Springs, revamping their decor and merchandise by adding a new artisanal products like freshly baked bread and local honey. It's good to see that the creamery still has the potential to thrive in new hands. Number one, vulnerable vets. 68-year-old Scott Cohn was living large in his California mansion, knowing that he had been scamming thousands of veterans into high-interest loans. Scott and his three co-conspirators created a corporation called Future Income Payments LLC, which promised investors up to 8% profit on their investments. During this time, the scam artists were reaching out to veterans in financial distress and offering lump sums in exchange for the rights to their monthly pensions. Unbeknownst to their targets, their contracts would end with tons of hidden fees and up to 240% interest on their loans. This led to the $300 million Ponzi scheme and the financial ruin of roughly 13,000 people. Scott was getting into trouble for years before the giant Ponzi scheme. In 1988, he opened 47 businesses that have since shut their doors. Then, in 2006, he was charged with three felonies for selling counterfeit computer parts. Scott pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 15 months in prison. 
Shortly after was when he started his biggest scam. He started Future Income Payments LLC and 20 other companies to run his complex Ponzi scheme. Scott had ordered that they use late night advertising in the internet to reach more people. He even had one of his co-conspirators host a 90 minute seminar called Social Security Facts 101. During this seminar, he convinced investors to allow Black Harbor Wealth Management, one of Scott's businesses, to be their financial advisor. He claimed that he had heard all the horror stories and promised this wouldn't be one. Unfortunately, he forgot to mention the 60 clients in South Carolina that his company had already become a horror story to. Black Harbor played a significant role in this scheme by being the primary way of gaining investors. Once investors put their money in the hands of Black Harbor, Scott would use it to give out loans to struggling veterans coming to future income payments. One alleged target was a veteran trying to pay for his wife's cancer treatment. He originally went to Scott for a $5,000 loan, not knowing that soon he would end up charging 50% of hidden fees and 240% interest on that loan. Another target was a school librarian named Mary Orem. She invested over $50,000 of her money she saved over 25 years working in a high school. When the time came, she was promised a 6 to 8% annual profit and hoped it would keep her out of a nursing home. Now, she's lost all but $6,000, one of the thousands who had lost money. Meanwhile, Scott lived a lavish lifestyle in an exclusive gated community, a $4.8 million mansion overlooking the Pacific Ocean just south of LA. He spent a lot of his money on the house and paid for the pool maintenance, furniture, and carpets, HOA fees, and a custom painter for the place. I guess they say a man's home is his castle. After months of trying to track Scott down, the FBI found him living out of a rented house and eating at IHOP in San Diego as a man named Russell Armstrong. Scott had stolen an ID from a man who had died in 2018. They think he had used cash to stay in hotels for a while before renting the home. When Scott was arrested, they charged him with conspiracy to commit wire fraud and mail fraud. They found that his scheme had affected people across 25 states. On August 18th, 2022, he was sentenced to 10 years and was ordered to pay $501 million in restitution and penalties. Although most people often never see their money again, we hope it doesn't take too long to liquidate Scott's assets so the people who were scammed by him can have justice for the fraud committed. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section whether or not you believe that everyone is capable of stealing a large amount of money or not.